we keep coming back to the electric fence. If there was a way to monitor it, to know what's going on with that fence, that's going to keep people out, trespassers out. It's going to keep everything out. ...and building a perimeter security array in the next video. But for now, I want to talk about how we monitor an electrified fence. In 1978, it was granted patent number 4,220,949. And here's, here's a picture of the main circuit diagram. Here's how it works. It involves a neon tube. You see, an electric fence is not constantly energized. An electric fence throws a very high voltage pulse, as high as 25,000 volts, down the wire for 50 microseconds. That's 0 .00005 seconds. High voltage, low time. That's why when you grab an electric fence, you don't, your muscles don't freeze up. You don't jam on it and stand there until you fry. You grab an electric fence, you get the shock, and it bangs you away. It'll often knock you backwards. It's because that pulse hits you real hard, but for a real short period of time. Now, how do you measure such a short voltage pulse? So the invention was needed at its time. But he used a neon tube, and then, you, and then here, I'll, right here, you can see where the neon tube is. That's the circuit diagram for it. Use the neon tube to flash every time the voltage hit it. So right here next to the neon tube is this optically sensitive photoresistor. This resistor says, oh, look, there's, there's some light. There is some light. There is some light. The average pulse on electric fence is once a second. The rest of the circuit over here, you know, charges this capacitor and all, but what it does is it says, yes, there's voltage on the fence. Yes, there's voltage on the fence. And as long as that pulse keeps coming in on a regular basis, it says that the, the fence is working properly. Every electric fence monitor, every electric fence sensor in the world uses this patent except for the fence hawk. The problem with this particular patent is that it doesn't measure the actual voltage. It just says there's voltage there. If weeds grow up, if resistance builds up on the fence and the voltage drops from 10,000 to 3,000 to 300 volts, as long as that pulse is still coming on a regular basis, the sensor thinks the fence is okay. Second problem, electrical storms. The lightning bolt will throw the pulse rate off, which makes it trigger as a false alarm. Quite often with this kind of sensor system, People will just turn it off in the electrical storm because it will generate false alarms. The fence hawk, because it measures the absolute voltage, because it does things completely differently, isn't subject to these false alarms. So just at a glance, we can see there's something significantly different about a fence hawk, isn't there? I mean, here's two computer chips on the motherboard. They do all kinds of logic. Also, you see these set points on a fence hawk motherboard. This first one is to set the weed alert voltage. Let's say you have a 10,000 volt fence. If the voltage falls below, oh, seven or 8,000 volts, you've got, you've got weeds growing up or something else causing, a, uh, causing the voltage to be lowered. And the fence isn't as effective. It still works, but it's less effective. Weed alert gives you a separate maintenance warning. So not a burglar alarm, doesn't call central station. You can just set up to set a, the signal like a strobe light or something that says time to cut the weeds back. Set point number two is where you set your delay. When you do have a no voltage situation, like somebody's coming over the fence or somebody cuts the fence or a tree falls on the fence, there's a lot of what if scenarios that it's not necessarily intruder just because you have no voltage uh, momentarily. So at set point number two, we can actually set the delay. It comes factory set for six seconds. If that voltage has gone to six seconds and stays there for six seconds, you've got an intruder or your fence is down or your fence has been cut, you've got a problem. But a falling branch, for example, can hit the fence and will fall off and usually that's just a few seconds. So why trip a false alarm? We have the same situation with a lightning strike. A lightning strike a quarter of a mile away, sometimes a mile away, will throw a high energy voltage pulse on that fence. 
Well, again, why trigger a false alarm? So we put that time delay in. Like I say, it's preset at the factory at six seconds, but you can turn it down to one second, 30 seconds. It's a totally user adjustable. Up here on the box, we see the two set points. This is where you hook, this is where you touch your bone meter to when you make these settings. And, oh, right, set point number three. This is factory set. This has to do with the input voltage. And we recommend you don't change that without calling us. But yes, the fence hawk will run on 12 or 24 volts DC. And we preset it for what you've ordered, usually 12 volts DC. And that's the basics of the fence hawk. As you can see, there's a lot more to it than that 1978 patent that's based on a flashing neon tube. We actually physically measure the voltage on the fence. We make a lot, lot of logical decisions. And then the terminals on the end of the box here, they can hook up to any standard alarm panel. Or you can hook them up to sirens, flashing lights, strobe lights. Thanks for watching today. In our next episode, we're going to visit the Fence Hawk Factory. See you then. Mm -hmm.